What's going on YouTube? Dubs here, back with another RuneScape guide. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Moons of Peril. The Perilous Moons. So let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at how to get to the bosses. They are over in the Kingdom of Varlamor, underneath Rylos's Rise, in the Dwarven City known as Camtorum. There are several ways to get here. You can use the Quetzal teleports that you unlock. Um, taking them from Varrock or the city and just teleporting to here and running down. There's also a Quetzal station down here that you could teleport to and run to uh, Quetzal here if you've unlocked it. There's a fairy ring code over here for AJP and you can just run all the way over to Camtorum. Um, if you have it unlocked and have done any mining on the inside, my personal favorite and favorite way of getting there and the one I'll be using today is using the Calcified Moths which you can get from mining inside of Camtorum. Once you pop the Calcified Moth, it just teleports you directly inside of Camtorum. And you can just run directly north, and you'll end up finding yourself into the entrance to the Moons of Peril. Here is an image of the Camtorum map. You'll enter down here, city entrance, and just run all the way to the north to the Napotsli entrance. Once inside the Napotsli entrance, go ahead and keep running north, but instead of going to the left, let's run right to the east and go up the north northeastern path over this way through this dungeon that we're in currently, the little Napotsli dungeon. We're going to run across this little bridge to the northeast over here and continue running. You'll see this cooking station up here if you've completed the quest and set up the camps already. If not, you'll want to run up here and set up a camp up this direction. And once you reach this station up here, go ahead and make yourself a nice cup of tea to recover your run energy. And we'll go over the gearing and inventory setup now. I'm going to throw up a picture on the screen right now showing you the most effective to least effective equipment for the bosses. I pulled these images off the wiki. It is super useful if you guys end up needing to see it again. Just head over to the wiki or go ahead and pause the video. But for the Eclipse Moon boss, this is the most effective following down to the least effective gear. Then heading over to the Blue Moon boss, we are doing it again from the most effective on the left to the least effective on the right. The Blue Moon boss being weak to crush, and the Eclipse Moon was weak to stab. Now we're going to head over to the Blood Moon boss, and the Blood Moon boss, again, most effective on the left and least effective on the right, is weak to slash damage and has that healing effect, so you tend to go with a bit more tankier gear for this boss. For my equipment, I'll be bringing along with me the Nateez Not Face Guard, the Amulet of Torture, the Justicar Chest Plate, and Leggards. I'll be also bringing the Primordial Boots, Berserker Ring Imbued, Dragon Defender, Osmutin's Fang, Barrow's Gloves, and War Blessing, as well as my Fire Cape. In my inventory, for weapon swaps, I'll also be bringing along a crush weapon. I'll be bringing along the dual Makahoodles. I don't know how to say that correctly, guys. I'm doing my best there. Uh, also be bringing along an Abyssal Tentacle. And a Dragonfire Shield for a little defensive bonus. And you'll end up weapon swapping for some of the bosses, but we'll get into that in just a minute. You will not need to bring anything into the dungeon with you. You can come over to the supply crates and grab from them herb lore supplies and fishing supplies. You can also hunt for food inside the dungeon, but my preferred method is fishing. I find it much easier, and the fish also heal for 30 health. At least, they heal me for 30 health. I'm not sure if they're HP-based regeneration or what, but it is a massive chunk and super nice. Once you have grabbed some herb lore supplies, you're going to want to run over to that grubby sapling I was just at and use the grubs on your pestle and mortar. And you can go ahead and grab out some more herb lore supplies and just add the grubs to the vials of water to create some moonlight potions. The moonlight potions are amazing for the fact that they are super combat potions as well as herb or er, er, prayer potions. Um, grab some fishing supplies next and run over here to the fishing spot. It's almost like a little fishing mini game. Your guy is going to dip his net into the water and you can align it to the left or right and try and catch him a little bit quicker. Almost like the Jack and Daxter mini game that was out on the uh, Jack and Daxter Precursor Legacy. If you feel like getting fancy with it, you can click these bushes behind you and turn your character around and you can sweep backwards and just look like a weirdo fishing inside the dock. 
Once your fish are finished, go ahead and drop your net and run over to the fishing station and use your fish on the cooking stove over here. Cook up all your fishies so you're ready to go for the boss fight. And then let's run over through this entrance over here. We're going to run back across this bridge, past our fishing spot, continue south, and then to the west just a little bit, and through this door with the statues right at it. This will be the Eclipse Moon boss. Um, before we walk in, we are going to take a sip of our Moonlight Potion for the bonus effects over here for the 19 attack bonus, 26 defense, and 19 strength. Um, go ahead and turn on piety if you want to. It's not necessarily required. I'm going to set up my quick prayers for turning it on and off as we are doing the fight. Go ahead and walk into the room. All right, so there are a couple special phases during the bosses, and I'm going to showcase them all. So I'm going to try not to phase skip anything. We're just going to start here now. All right, pretend that moon wasn't there while we walked in. Um, once you walk into the room and you see a glowing tile, you're going to want to stand on these glowing tiles the entire fight. And then click on the boss to keep damaging him. Every time he attacks twice, these glowing tiles are going to rotate. So he's attacked me twice, it's going to rotate. He's attacked me once, he's attacked me twice. But instead of rotating this time, he's going to do a special effect, one of his moves. For this one, he's going to teleport around you, and all you have to do is click in front of him to damage him. So that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just going to keep teleporting around me, and I'm just going to keep clicking right in front of where he spawns at. You don't have to wait till your character finishes the animation. You just want to tap right where he is as soon as you see him coming. Your character will take zero damage, and you'll deal some to him. I think I need to stop hitting him, though. I'm going to end up killing him, and that is not my goal. I wanted to get to the... Nice. All right. So, he's going to spawn back into the center and start doing the moon phases again where you're going to want to stay on the highlighted tiles he's going to hit you twice and rotate around the room i'm not hitting him currently because i want to show you guys the next special effect so stand on the glowing tiles still just let him hit you start hitting him if you guys need to obviously doing some damage and we're at the last one so he's going to do his next special effect so this one's really nice it's super easy this is going to start moving, and I have a couple tiles highlighted. And as soon as it starts moving, you can leave your run energy on and just move to the next corner tile. I see people, like, clicking their run energy on and off and on and off and doing, like, a walking, running sprint. It's really whatever you're comfortable with, but I think that the running from corner to corner is easiest. I actually had my run energy off right there, so I got hit. And you can just run from corner to corner and not get hit. On the last stop one, you can just run out and just go and start hitting him at this glowing tile over here, which is why I have it labeled last stop so I know which one, or you can just count, it moves across all four corners, but I don't want to count. And that is all there is for the Eclipse Moon. Just keep rotating with the tiles as they light up and hitting him, and boom, those were his two special attacks. All right, let's go ahead and eat some fish, top off our health, take a sip of tea to refill our run energy, and go ahead and run over to the east through these next door over here with uh, statues at it for the Blue Moon boss. So the blue moon, oh, I didn't explain it on the last fight, guys. So the reason I on, on the Eclipse Moon I had us Mutant's Fang out, by the way, he is weak to stab damage, and the blue moon is weak to crush damage. So I'll be swapping my weapons from the Fang over to the dual Maka Hoodle Eatle or whatever it is, guys, for a little bit of crush damage. Go ahead and sip the Moonlight Potion for the bonus, and we're going to walk through. All right, so for this special right here, tornadoes go around the room. He'll start healing his health up a little bit, and all you have to do is run over to these bra braziers over here and light them. If you get hit by a tornado, it, it'll damage you and turn off your run energy. So, makes it easier to walk through it, honestly, but you won't do it as quick and he'll end up healing. But you can just run through and just kind of light him and he'll stop healing. And then you're going to want to run back to this tile over here, guys, with this little half moon right here, because it'll always be the first damaging tile after the tornado phase. So just like the other boss though, tiles lit up, you are going to get in a couple hits, he's going to hit you a couple times, and then you're going to rotate over to the next tile, hit him a couple times, he's going to hit you, and rotate to the next one. Just like the previous boss, all the moon's bosses have this mechanic, and he's about to use his next special attack, where he is going to suck away your weapons from your hands and throw them in an icicle. So you're going to want to start punching the icicle while dodging these icicles coming out of the ground. They'll end up hitting you if you stay on it, so you can hit it twice and walk away. Hit it twice and walk away. 
super nice, super easy, and you'll end up getting your weapon back. And then you'll want to come stand over here. This is a safe tile. Icicles will never spawn on this tile, and you don't have to worry about them. Um, generally, after you break the ice, there will be three waves of icicles. Then you can run over to this tile, and you can just start hitting the boss again. And that's all there is to the blue moon. We've seen both special effects on him now. Super easy. Bam. On to the next one. For the last and final moon, it'll be the blood moon. Go ahead and eat some fish, top off your health, take a sip of tea, and refill your run energy. And we're going to be running to the east down this hallway, a couple steps north, and then to the east again through this doorway with the statues at it and this little red grass looking like some blood grass. The Blood Moon is weak to slash damage, so you'll want to end up having your best slash weapon with you. I have the Abyssal Tentacle. I'm going to be turning on, equipping my Abyssal Tentacle and Dragon Fire Shield. The reason I'll be using a defensive slot as opposed to the Dragon Defender is the Blood Moon heals every time he hits you. The first hit will heal for one times, second hit I believe is two times, and the third hit heals for five times whatever he hits you for. So if he hits you for a 5 on the third hit, he's going to heal for 25 damage. So the additional defensive gear makes him heal less often. It is super nice. Alright, so we're going to walk in the room now. I'm going to stop talking about that at least. And we have the glowing tiles. I'm going to turn on piety and just keep following the glowing tiles as we move around the room. Not sure which special we're at currently. I believe it's going to be the blood rain actually. Alright, so we have the blood rain. I have tiles marked over here on the northern side of the room, northeastern corner I should say, most tile. Um, he will always, this will be the first attack tile after the blood moon, or blood rain, I don't know what I'm saying, guys, trying to stay focused. Um, yeah, so this will be the attack tile, you'll want to follow it around and just kind of dodge the blood as it's at your feet, it'll hit you for a little bit of damage and heal him, nothing crazy, so just kind of dance around the room and stay near these tiles over here, so that way you can start damaging him as soon as possible following the tiles around the room still every other hit he's about to activate his next special attack where he's going to suck a whole bunch of health from you and spawn a blood jaguar for you so run over to your highlighted tile and start fighting the blood jaguar while you're hitting him you'll notice that the blood behind you starts to spawn and despawn you can walk back to avoid the jaguar's hit which would heal him and then also avoid the damage from the blood by doing it perfectly so you end up getting heals. See how he hit me there for 5? He's going to heal for 15. And it'll just end up healing the boss. So you can avoid healing the boss right there by just kind of juking the Blood Jaguar's attacks out like I just was. And after the Blood Jaguar, this tile over here will always be the damaging tile. So I have it marked with all, all lit up so I just know to run there. And then we're going to rotate after two hits to this one, and then the next one, so on and so forth, just like the previous bosses. And the Blood Moon is down. Once the Blood Moon has been defeated, go ahead and take a sip of tea to keep your run energy up. And let's run all the way south this time, past all of the Sulfur Naguas. And these guys actually have a really cool new, unique drop known as the Sulfur Blades. If you want to kill one every time you run by... I think it's worth 200k currently, so it's a nice little bonus. Um, running through, once you reach this room, this is the rewards chest, the lunar chest. Once you've defeated all three moons, you can come and loot it. And uh, yeah, let's see what I get, guys. Hopefully something good. Grimy herbs, some water orbs, swamp tar, and sun-kissed bones. These are really nice prayer XP, actually. And something that's really nice is you can just bank it all and send it directly to your bank and not have to worry about it run straight through the northern door now and you can just keep continuing with your run we have all this fish left over and all these prayer pots left over so uh, you can just keep running north or east i guess currently and just keep following through and now you're back at the first boss you're at the eclipse moon again you can just keep following this circle and farming the moon's bosses i think they are fantastic loot good money per hour um not that hard I find them extremely enjoyable with all of the resource gathering and not having to spend any of your own money on resources. Uh, I personally have made over 20 million gold at the Perilous Moons just from drops here and there. Uh, it's fantastic. Why don't we take a look at their drops actually and pull up the Lunar Chest and see what we can get from the boss. 
the Eclipse Atalatl at 2.8 million, which is a super unique ranged weapon. It is the only ranged weapon in the game that scales with melee strength. So that's really unique and fun. Uh, the entire Eclipse set has a cool couple of unique procs for bonus damage, as well as the Blood Moon set is really cool melee armor. Um, it has a little kind of Darox vibe to it with a little missing health bonus damage. And the Blue Moon set is really cool. You have a chance to throw out a melee attack, I think, every time you use a magic spell with it. So it's a nice little melee magic combo set. They're really unique and fun. So it's honestly a really nice money maker, guys. I think that anyone should come and do this on their account, get some kills in, and enjoy it. That's all I have for the Perilous Moons guide, guys. Thank you all for hanging out with me and watching it. If you have any other tips or tricks I might have missed, let me know down in the comments below. Everyone else will greatly appreciate it. And thank you all again, guys. Peace out and game on, my friends.